Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So, another game from Fisher, second from this championship and also the last one. After this uh, game, after, the, uh, after I show you the game, I'm going to also show you the standings from the 1958-1959 US Championship. So let me just show you the game. Here the second game is against uh, Edmar Mednis, a very strong American chess grandmaster. So it goes, knight to c3 and c5. Already we have a crazy start, something called one git opening. Never have played it uh, and also don't know a lot about it. But as it often is, after a couple of moves we transpose in something more familiar. After knight to f3, knight to f6, e4, d6, we have a closed Sicilian. And this is how it continues. g3 to g6, bishop to g2, bishop to g7, castles, knight to c6. And uh, after d3 and castles by Fisher, uh, we have just the center setup of the closed Sicilian. Um, as it often is, uh, what, what white plans to do here, uh, Madness played h3, and uh, he wants to either continue the attack on the king side, he wants to try and push d4, prepare it with bishop to e3, maybe queen to d2, also I that h6, h6 square, uh, or knight to h2 and f4. So those are the kinds of moves that uh, people usually play in the close Sicilian. Uh, on the other hand, Fisher um, doesn't have the setup to actually push, push in the center. He would have to prepare it like playing e6 and d5. Probably he won't do it in this setup, or rather he, he would play like he did in the game, rook to b8 and try to expand on the queen side. The reason is he would like to push b5 and then b4 in order to move this knight away and after he, he moved this knight, uh, then this bishop becomes a very strong piece on this diagonal. So those are the general ideas and let's see what happened in the game. a4 and a6, so still preparing b5. Uh, you cannot push a5 to prevent it uh, entirely. So after bishop to e3, we have b5. a captures, a captures on b5, and one step towards expansion on the queen side is finished. And now, uh, as it seemed, after moving this knight, uh, Fisher would have, as I've said, a very strong bishop on this diagonal. So uh, Madness also tries to do the same. He pushes e5. Reason is, now after he moves his knight, this bishop will be also strong on this diagonal. Here we have pawn captures on uh, e5, the same would happen if knight captures and then knight captures and pawn captures. So here Fisher goes for immediate uh, pawn captures not to exchange knights. We have bishop captures on c5. Queen to c7 defending the knight because uh, this knight can jump somewhere uh, with some threats and then bishop would be attacking on c6, this knight is undefended. So Fisher to prevent that he plays queen to c7 right away. Now rook to e1. Uh, also possible was b4 to kind of solidify the position of this bishop and not uh, make it easy for Fisher to actually push it away. But okay, rook to e1 attacking once more on e5 is also a good move. And now we have b4 attacking the knight. Knight goes to a4. Uh, uh, it is on the edge of the board, but at least he is defending the bishop. Rook to d8 and now knight to d2. And now the idea behind this move is uh, if Fisher plays something like h6, some stupid move, you have bishop to c6, queen c6, and after that bishop to e7. Uh, Fisher lo loses a pawn, and uh, here the rook and the knight are attacked. So you have to address it, and here he plays knight to d4. We have knight to c4, once again attacking twice on e5, and now knight to d5, moving the knight so that the bishop is guarding on e5. Bishop captures on d4 and pawn captures on d4, and after this b3. After all of this, now still, still Madness bishop is uh, strong on this diagonal, but Fisher's bishop is kind of blocked with his own pawn. So not the best course of action that uh, Fisher might have expected, but still a quite a, a quite a decent game. He has the bishop pair and a very strong knight in the center. Uh, we have bishop to b7 and now queen to d2 e5, uh, just solidifying the center, and now knight from a to b2. Don't want to keep the knight on the edge of the board, but uh, maybe transfer it somewhere closer to the middle, to the center where the, the action is happening. And now uh, it is uh, decision time. Now it's time to actually make a plan. Uh, none of the players did make some serious advantage after 
in the first couple of moves in the opening and now in the middle game and uh, Fischer decided that he wants to play the end game with the bishop pair and uh, to actually do that he plays a rook to a8 and the uh, idea behind this move is uh, kind of tempt white to actually capture on d5 because after bishop captures bishop captures this pawn is hanging and in this end game uh, white would have uh, two knights uh, and a pawn against two bishops after all the pieces are exchanged but uh, you don't want to do it right away because um, after bishop captures you have rook captures on a1 rook captures and rook captures on d5 the threat is queen to c6 and the queen would be very deadly on this diagonal so here men is first place king to h2 to move uh, the king out of the way so that rook to g1 is possible at any point uh, and here Fisher plays h5 and now madness goes for this idea bishop captures bishop captures and queen captures on b4 Fisher exchange one pair of rooks and now he plays queen to d7 now he will try to attack on this on this diagonal and also try to come to f3 to maybe have some threats on g2 and h1 so uh, madness goes queen to a1 bring the queen closer to the defense and queen to f5 threatens queen to f3 so knight to d2 stops that h4 so the whole idea behind h5 is to come closer to the king's defenses and actually start attacking and we have knight from b to c4 so knights are slowing but they're surely coming to the defenses but we will see is it fast enough pawn captures and pawn captures and after this queen to e6 now uh, the whole idea behind this move is actually to play f5 and continue with the attack because you have to play actively uh, you have sacrificed the pawn and you have to open up the position so that the bishop pair makes sense and uh, here we have knight to e4 always good to centralize your pieces and f5 and here madness uh, i'm not really sure so i didn't find any information did he actually blunder here or did he actually went for this uh, variation he played queen to a5 he could have just easily played knight to g5 attacking the queen and after queen to e7 h4 having the knight on g5 would be quite good for him uh, but he decided to play queen to a5 attacking the rook and uh, now if queen moves to e7 that you would have queen to c5 maybe go for the exchange uh, of the queens but still fisher would have a bishop pair uh, and white would have a pawn so still an end game that needs to be played but here fisher just went rook to a8 and after queen capture the queen has to capture so you cannot def if you move the queen you cannot defend the rook and you just lose the rook so uh queen has to capture bishop captures and rook captures with check bishop to f8 blocks and now where will you put the knight once again knight to g5 with h4 would be the best idea but here madness makes a mistake and he plays knight from e to d6 now queen to d5 attacking the rook and also threatening queen to f3 rook comes to e8 queen to f3 and in this position madness just uh, should have played actively uh, knight to e5 was a possibility so attacking the queen and also going for some knight d7 knight g6 ideas going for this bishop um, but uh, for some reason he played h4 maybe he was afraid of uh, queen to f2 queen f1 but in the end fisher always can have a draw but he is in a better position even though his a bishop is pinned and uh, his position doesn't look too good around the around the king uh, this queen is very deadly after queen to f2 capturing on c2 and capturing the spawns uh, quick move would go towards the winning end game so here fisher plays queen to f2 and uh, out of nowhere here uh, madness played king to h3 to actually prolong the game he should have played king to h1 but he played king to h3 and after queen to g1 he just resigned the game the reason is uh, <laughs> queen to h1 is an unstoppable checkmate threat so yeah you can try and play for example g4 but then f4 and checkmate will follow so after this move in three moves so yeah madness uh, i'm not sure did he blunder or did he actually went for that uh, move uh, queen to a5 with an idea to actually pressure and have an active play i guess we will never know but okay in the end fisher won this game and he managed to defend his title from the previous year so once again as a 15 year old he became the champion of the us us chess so let me just show you the final standings here there are 
as you can see Fisher is first with one point in front of Reshevsky. You also had Sherman in third place and Donald Byron sharing with Lombardi, Bisgar and Evans the fourth place. Also notable Paul Benko and Madness was sharing actually the 11th place with Weinstein. So okay, uh, that is pretty much it for this video and this tournament. Later on uh, I will show you yeah, another tournament that uh, Fisher played in 1959 before the candidates tournament, but more about that in the future videos. So that being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.